Hey everyone, um, thanks for joining us. Um, it's Jenny and Hannah with 4AR People. We're back with week three of the Arkansas Legislature, their recap on what they um, did this week and the drama and all the good stuff that you need to know about. Hannah, talk to us about um, the bathroom bill that was up in committee today. Yeah, so um, I believe it's House Bill 1156. I, I could be wrong, um, but another Bentley like attack on trans students in particular. Um, you know, it's, it's just the same stuff, a different day, um, really hard to watch a lot of heartfelt testimony against the bill, but it's still passed. Um, and a lot of these committees are full of Republicans, not many Democrats on committee. So even if they do stand up against a bill like this, it's just kind of like they're they're just kind of speaking to the void. Um, not to bring anyone down or anything, but that was earlier today that happened. Yeah. Um, and similarly, um, another icky bill um, that we talked about last week, um, which is Senate Bill 43 um, from Senator Gary Stubbefield. That bill um, had passed unanimously out of committee and was on the floor of the Senate this week for a vote. Um, spoiler, it also passed um, with every Republican voting for it and every Democrat voting against it. Um, but, you know, despite it getting out of um, the floor really fast, I think there are some, you know, noteworthy things that we can talk about that that happened um, on the Senate floor. One thing that stood out to me um, was something that Senator Clark Tucker said. Um, he said that the, the bill is not about governing, that it's about bullying. Um, and I also think um, Senator Greg Letting um, did a great job when he um, talked about how he looks at every bill through this lens of like, does it help our Kansans or does it hurt our Kansans? Um, because proponents of the bill framed it as this is going to protect children. We need to protect children and keep them safe from things that will harm them. Um, but Senator Letting pointed out that this bill would actually hurt children um, because it you know, targets trans people in particular. Um, and also we have so many other pressing issues in this state, like really high rates of child hunger and child mortality and children who die by firearms, um, that it's it's really sad that we um, that our lawmakers are taking up legislation that actually doesn't solve any problems and just targets a particular group of people that are already um, at risk. Hannah, do you have any thoughts on the Senate voting out <laughs> Senate Bill 43? Yeah, I mean, just everything that you said, um, I'm really tired of the legislature using children as a smokescreen to pass really hateful legislation that they know is targeting a group of people. They say that the legislation isn't. Um, and I know like when people get up to speak against bills, you know, they have to be respectful, but they know and they're denying that they know that this is a targeted bill that this is targeted legislation along those lines you know nearly everyone that spoke for the bill including um senator subafield um spoke from this point of view of of being a christian and the bible was invoked a lot during this debate on the senate floor um so much so that it was quite egregious in my opinion and that was a lot of feedback that we got from our audience when we were live tweeting it was kind of the shock or a surprise that really the the Bible and the Bible's um, you know determination of morality and what is right and wrong was the center to um, this bill's intent. This is not unusual um, for our state legislature, and it's not unusual for for the Senate. Um, so there's some some blurring of those lines between church and state. So. The Arkansas legislature also wants to criminalize anyone who's had an abortion, which is amazing. Um, maybe not had, but wants to start doing so. Um, and you know, it's a really bad bill when you have people like the family council coming in and saying, this is not a pro-life bill. We don't want to arrest women who have gotten abortions or anyone who has told someone to get an abortion. Um, but I mean, they just continue to criminalize our existence. Mm. This week in Arkansas, it was apparently school choice week, 
And if you didn't know that was a thing, that makes two of us because I didn't know that was a thing either. Um, you know, last week we had this press conference with Sarah Sanders, um, where she, you know, was talking about unleashing her bold education reform, which we know will probably include expanding vouchers, which is giving, um, you know, public tax dollars to um, students to attend private schools, some cases, even homeschooling. You know, we still have yet to see the governor's omnibus education bill that hasn't been filed yet. Um, but we had some out of state lobbyists, um, kind of swarm <laughs> Little Rock, um, with these interesting, like pep rally style events, um, where they were like chanting fund students, it's not system or like Arkansas is going to fund students, not system, which is a really catchy, um, phrase, I think, and really good marketing. These, these groups are like really well-funded and, you know, um, have one goal, which is <laughs> expanding, school choice and vouchers uh, like across the United States. So it's this big national machine. Um, and they came in and had this rally and the governor spoke at that briefly. Um, and again, like just for our audience, like we vehemently believe that vouchers are um, a way that we will dismantle public education in the state if we expand this. So expanding it to be broader to where essentially any student would be able to make the choice to go to a private school um, and have that be paid by taxpayer dollars um, would really, you know, siphon away important funding for our public education um, system, particularly in rural areas and in smaller districts where students don't have the option to go to a private school. You know, it's not a partisan issue to believe in investing in public education. Um, we wholeheartedly believe that, you know, our pay AR teachers movement and coalition is made up of people all across the political spectrum, including lawmakers who sit on both sides of the aisle. An example of this is um, this week, um, Representative Wooten, who's a Republican from BB, he filed a couple of really great bills, in my opinion, um, that are kind of in response to, to the harm that vouchers would cause. Um, and one of them would require um, private schools um, that receive vouchers, receive public funds to to have transportation for students within 35 miles. Um, and another bill would require private schools to accept any student that applies with a voucher, um, and then also require those same schools to submit um, annual student assessment tests that would then provide that accountability and transparency for private schools that public schools have. Um, so these are really interesting. The Republican proposed um, for a Republican in a more rural area for somebody who has championed public schools during his um, duration in the in the legislature. And there'll be a great test to see if lawmakers really do want school choice to be about opportunity and equity, which is the argument that they make. You know, a student shouldn't be trapped because of his or her zip code or because they're in a failing school. Okay, well, if that's the case, they should vote yes on these bills if they believe that. Um, because they want these students to really have access to this. If people vote no on these bills, I think it's a really big indication that the school choice movement is really about um, enriching those who already have, um, you know, skin in the game. Still on the same topic, we have, like we said earlier, we have yet to see anything from Sarah Huckabee Sanders about school choice or paying teachers, but the Democrats did um, today on Thursday, they did finally come out with the RAISE Act. Um, I believe it, it's the same or very similar to the one that they proposed during the special session. So good, good. We're very excited about that. Um, currently, the minimum wage in Arkansas is like 36000 I think, 35, 36 minimum pay for a teacher. And this bill would raise the minimum salary to 50 k um, which is amazing. <laughs> they deserve it. Um, and it would also increase the classified staff compensation to 15 an hour, um, which is over a minimum wage in Arkansas. So good, good for them. Yeah. Um, interested to see what will happen with these bills. Um, the Democrats filed it before the governor has filed her bill that we have yet to see. Um, so it'll be interesting. And I think intentional that they filed them as standalone bills that aren't tied to anything like vouchers or other, you know, potential legislation that would harm, um, you know, public education as an institution. So, and now uh -huh. there's really like, you know, I love that they came out first with the 50 K, um, because I think that's going to be really important, 
uh, I think if we didn't have like a standard set, then there's no telling what would come from the governor's office. Um, because to her, it could have been like a thousand dollar rate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, from what happened in the off year with the, um, adequacy study reports, it seemed like what was being proposed, um, was a $4,000 increase in the minimum salary requirement. So I guess that would bump us up to around 40. So yeah, having 50 as a proposed, um, you know, minimum salary for teachers would be, this is obviously a big difference and a really great incentive if something like that passes to keep us competitive. Um, I've heard a lot of, you know, proponents of public education and teacher pay raises talk about like, there's not actually a teacher shortage. Um, we're experiencing that, but really it's people leaving the profession because they're not um, paid what they're worth and treated with respect and dignity. And they're called all kinds of terrible things um, by people who want to dismantle the really wonderful institution of public school. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, I think we need like a public school love fest in our state. Like we have some really great public schools, like sports, come on. Like who doesn't love their like local high school football team? Like this is literally like Friday night lights here in Arkansas. Like mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to function without our, <laughs> without our like own lived Friday night lights experience. Like, I mean, that's what public school provides for so many people. Um, and I would hate to see rural communities lose that um, because we're catering to, to folks who are already going to send their kids to private schools, which is their prerogative. Absolutely. Um, we just need to keep those public dollars in our public schools. Absolutely. I agree. I think that's it. Hannah, is that it? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. I hope that um, the next time we chat with everyone, that there will be fewer, um, you know, divisive policy issues and dr dramatic things to talk about and more substantive um, bills that we can discuss. Um, but you never know because it's the legislature. So thank you for listening. Um, keep tuning in and showing up, even though these videos are probably getting much longer. <laughs> um, and sign up for our newsletter if you haven't yet. And um, keep, keep doing the thing to make Arkansas better. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye.